we're back with some more oxygen not included. And our duplicates have just returned from the water planet, and they have brought with them a valuable bounty. Namely, the about 30 tons of lime and 29 tons of graphite. This is going to allow us to produce, well, a lot of steel, and that graphite is going to be used to make super coolant. And that super coolant we can use to upgrade the cooling loop inside our rocket. I do feel like all of our current missions are just sort of to upgrade this rocket even more. Though, maybe not the next one. Our next mission is to head over to the fire planet and grab ourselves some niobium so we can get our hands on thermium. Do we need it to upgrade the rocket? No, but I mean, I'm sure there's stuff we could do with it. Right, but first, uh, we need lots of steel and... Ooh, we need to make a few changes here back home. One thing we have been very lax about is Atmos suits. Uh, basically, duplicates when they go in and out, occasionally they're, they mess up going through these and they don't get an Atmos suit. I don't know what causes it. Occasionally it happens, occasionally it doesn't. So what we've done is we've added in a couple of extra doors and made sure all the duplicates can only come back inside. And I've checked, every single duplicate is inside the base and two Atmos suits are missing. So we are going to get those loaded up. Uh, once the uh, all the Atmos suit docks are full, then we can open the doors back up again and start doing a little bit of renovations. You see, while we've been playing, we've been playing pretty casual. We've, we haven't had any major overarching goals, so we've just been, you know, taking it easy and doing whatever took our fancy. So we need to maybe clean this place up a bit. Oh, maybe not now. I mean, I'm looking around and this place is an absolute mess. Look at this. There's loads of natural environment left. It's not square. It's not, you know, confined down. It's just like a lot of inefficiencies. But we've kind of invested all of our time and effort into this rocket, so I'm... Yeah, I'm just going to keep doing that. So instead, what we're going to do is... Yeah, we need to put in a molecular forge. A molecular forge is what's going to allow us to make super coolant. And I'm thinking right here is the perfect place to put it. We don't want to put it inside here. Otherwise, the graphite might melt because it's too warm. So we're going to put the molecular forge just outside. But it's a bit warm. Let's see. We're going to rewrite that cooling loop. That cooling loop is going to come down here, cool down this area. And then... Then we can put in the molecular forge. I think we can carve ourselves out a little chunk of space here. I used some insulated blocks to push the steam out of the way. Now we're just going to dig this area out, put in our uh, refinement facilities, and then we can finish off the piping. I removed the oil through here, and that was the output pipe from when we were cooling down a bunch of salt water. Or cleaning some salt water and taking that hot water and pumping it into our rocket. We don't need that anymore. Our rocket has enough water to keep it going for a while longer, I think. All right, so we need to go down, I think, one more level here. We'll make our molecular forge out of steel because we have, well, we have loads of steel. In fact, how much steel do we have at the moment? 49 tons just in this area, and inside our colony ship, we have another 58 tons. Plus, when it comes to lime, we've got at least, well, 20 tons of lime there, and, oh, we also got about 20 tons of fossil as well that we have to break down into even more lime. We're gonna have even more steel coming up. We may have to make more refined carbon just to make it all work. And over here, we're putting in the plumbing necessary to add on this to the cooling loop. We have plenty of water in here. This is the cooling loop we made. Oh God, I, I can't even remember how long ago this was. In fact, if we go check the properties here, this tells me this was made 1,313 cycles ago. So we put in enough water in here to make sure that we can expand out this cooling loop if we needed to. And 1,300 cycles later, we do need to expand this cooling loop. Well, we don't need to, but it is handy. So, done. There we go. Now that should drag the temperature down. Right here, it's about 50 to 60 degrees, which is a little bit warm. But that should quickly plummet. There we go. Plummeting the temperature down to something more reasonable. We'll have to make sure that whole area stays cool and we haven't drawn too much water out of the system. But I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly confident we'll be fine. All right. You... We're going to want a whole bunch of super coolant. All it requires is fullerene, gold, and petroleum. Uh, ooh, and petroleum-wise, instead of making a location where we can just pump it out, I've been taking all of the, uh, well, the slickster poop. All of the petroleum they've been making, we've been taking that and pumping it into these. If there's any overflow, it gets dumped back onto the fuel line to get burnt off. So we have many, many, many tons of this stuff. When we need it, we just deconstruct a liquid reservoir, drops it on the ground, and... Then we just replace the liquid reservoir as needs be. So we've got plenty of this stuff lying around if we ever need it. We could automate it, but I kind of like knowing that all of the petroleum we've got came from one location and it's just our slicksters consuming carbon dioxide. All right, you, uh, super coolant wise. What are you missing? Where's the fullerene? Oh, it's on the spaceship. Let's bring the fullerene in here. Wait, wait, wait. I'm being an idiot. I didn't bring back fullerene. I brought back graphite. And the graphite we can use with sulfur and aluminum to make fullerene. 
Right, so uh, we use our graphite, sulfur, and all that to make fullerene. Let's just chuck in, you know what, give us loads of that. Perfect. Then for super coolant, we're going to want, you know what, give us loads of super coolant as well. Insulation-wise, we're still going to need to get our hands on isoresin. That is when we have to, oh, we're going to have to find the tree for that. That's way too much effort. I think thermium is next up. I want to we want to tame that Niobium volcano. There's some good designs out for it now that are just um, hilarious, but also fun to use. So, let's get ourselves some super coolant, upgrade our rocket marginally with the super coolant, and then go tame a Niobium volcano. Production begins, but, uh, you just stand there? What happened to the... I thought they had animations for this. Never mind. Uh, maybe those things need updating, or maybe my game's just bugging out. Nope, they press the button and then they just hang around looking very impressed with the machine doing its spinny whirry things. Perfect. All right, we'll just wait until that's finished and then we're going to get some super coolant going. I should probably find a location to store that super coolant, though. We doubled production because, well, we could and it was taking too long otherwise. Uh, we've put in some storage locations up here for our super coolant, though I'm thinking I'm going to dump some more up here for now. Reason being is we want to start replacing the coolant loop inside our rocket with super coolant right about now. Well, once the say finishes. This should at least get us started, so let's see exactly how we're going to do this. Now, what we really should do to be safe is shut off the nuclear reactor, and once that's shut down, replace the the nuclear waste coolant loop with the super coolant so we don't have to worry about things overheating or anything like that going wrong. But that seems like an awful lot of effort, so like, let's just wing this. I figure we pump in the super coolant here, uh, it'll come across here, down, and then back to, say, there. Then we can bridge it on. Yeah, like that. And we'll cut that off there. Then what we're going to do is have to siphon off the nuclear waste. To do that, I say we get the nuclear waste, we can slide it on here, and that should dump it out the output port. Uh, where would that go, actually? Uh, Output-wise, you would go, yep, yeah, down here and into our nuclear waste storage. So we're going to pump out the nuclear waste, pump in the super coolant, and hopefully do it in a very clean manner where we don't accidentally end up dumping super coolant at the port, which could happen. No, we, we should be able to avoid that. And make sure we keep enough coolant on the loop so that nothing actually breaks down. Fine. Be fine. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. The super coolant is all dumped outside here. We've now connected up the piping, so... All right, that's the super coolant flowing. That's going to go into the rocket. And then it's going to go across here and then down. Now, it can't get on. Namely because there's nuclear waste in the way. So we need to make sure that nuclear waste starts getting out of the way. Let's see if that should cause it to flow out that pipe. Second. Uh, this is a problem. You know what? It's fine. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna have a bit of an annoying break in the pipe, but we can we can fix that later. Okay. Great, we've sort of severed this. And I've had it done it right, we would have only lost That's gonna come back and bite me in the ass. I just know it is. But it's fine. It's fine for now. It's fine for now. Super coolant's flowing on. Nuclear waste is flowing out of the rocket. If we check outside, that nuclear waste is getting dumped down here into our liquid storage, which is perfect, exactly where we want it. Everything is going reasonably fine. Uh, actually, I think I have an idea on how to get rid of that nuclear waste. We can use one of our tricks from earlier, from later, earlier, whatever. Come on, come on, come on, go on around. Still got plenty of super coolant coming in to take up the slack. Dun dun dun, and where are you? Where are you? Damn it, I knew there was a packet here I was supposed to take off. I, I had to go back and check the footage to be sure because I was pretty sure I'd been cheating. Um, yeah, what had happened here was we had one blob of super coolant, one blob of radioactive waste, and then all the rest was pure super coolant, and I thought we were gonna have to somehow filter that out. I was gonna use this to like siphon it out and do some pop cutting and splicing, and but I think what happened was when this was passing through here, uh, I think the super coolant went in, flowed across here, and then the nuclear waste got processed through, or I don't know what happened. Something got slowed, or the radioactive waste got put in front, or something jumped ahead of something else, because this turned on and off somehow. So somehow we've ended up with the nuclear waste ending up at the front. Uh, it shouldn't have happened. I mean, honestly, I would just see why I was cheating, because that was way too good. That's uh, That was just oxygen not included, being nice to me. I can't remember the last time it's been this good. 
perfect. Uh, that means we just have to wait until this gets to there. Make sure we don't let any of the super coolant out. Okay, you can go to... You know what? That's fine. I'm going to slice you there. Nope, we're going to slice you there. That means all the nuclear waste leaves. Perfect. All the nuclear waste is left. We can chuck you on like that. Um, how much super coolant? You know, give me a few more blobs of super coolant. Oh, God. I let them off because I'm an idiot. Uh, one second. You, go on that way. You, sever that that way. Should have paused it. I should have been paying attention. Fine. Fine. Go there. Go there. We have to make sure that that super coolant that I just let outside the rocket doesn't get into our nuclear waste storage. Uh, yep. There you can see it. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? It happens to be in a really good location. You can be severed, and you can be pumped back in there. You can also be severed. Perfect, so now we can just dump it right back into the rocket. I know, I know, that's dumb, but... As long as it gets all of the nuclear waste out of the rocket, and gets all of the super coolant into the rocket, I think we're golden. Okay, just let me give, me give me a minute or two to clean out the pipes, make sure everything's functioning correctly. And this means we can start lowering the temperature. We've got this set to 42 degrees. We can drop that down to, say, make that 35. Just to make sure the temperature in here stays regularly below the temperature threshold. We were fine setting it that high, because we had the temperature sensor before here. It was all to do with the temperature of nuclear waste. See, nuclear waste, if you go to liquids, has a freeze point of 26.9. Let's say 27 degrees. Add on 14, which is what the thermal aquatuner reduces it by, and that's 41C, which means we can't really set this higher than 40, we couldn't really set this lower than 41C, because if you do that, you're risking freezing the nuclear waste. It's unlikely, there's also a two degree buffer and all sorts of stuff, but you like to give yourselves a little bit of uh, maneuvering room, especially considering we're one tile away from the aquatuner as well. But, end of the day, seems to be working. Oh. And I was wrong about airflow tiles being uh, nerfed so that they could take pressure damage. They still can't. It was just when I was playing around trying to figure out how to do stuff with airflow tiles and getting pressure damage, it was because I was doing it underwater in a debug map. And when I was doing it underwater in a debug map, the water was ending up inside the tiles and that was causing the pressure damage. So don't worry. I was thinking, yeah, it was pointed out to me afterwards. Otherwise, this would have burst open, it seems, and the rocket would have been crushed under the enormous pressure of water. Never mind. All right, I am going to uh, give this a few minutes to sort itself out, make sure we don't have too much super coolant in the loop. Spoiler, we probably do. And then once that's all fixed, we can get around to going to the fire planet. This is looking pretty solid and our temperatures have gone from being slightly orange to down to yellow. Uh, that should keep our reed fiber growing all the time. See, it used to be occasionally the temperatures would get a little bit too high for these and they'd stifle a bit until our, uh, our cooling got it back under control. But now, now we should be golden the whole way through. And it costs us a little bit less energy. Not that we need it. I mean, we've got a nuclear reactor in here. It's fine. Uh, one thing I would also like to take care of is down here, we've got this cooling loop uh, cooling our uh, the steam turbines up here and maybe providing a little bit of cooling down this side of the map. It's actually sort of bleeding cooling into our base as well. So I'd like to upgrade that cooling loop from polluted water to some super coolant. I mean, we have the super coolant right here, so it just seems like a waste not to use it immediately. So I'm thinking we just put in a siphon. All we'll do is we'll say grab liquid filter. Steel is fine. We got plenty of that stuff. Show that down there. And uh, then we'll have, say, radiant pipe. We'll plug in the polluted water there. Any polluted water, actually anything that's not super coolant, will get chucked out the top. So all the super coolant can go to there. So you cut that off there. Uh, that can go continue up here, and you know what, we'll just dump it across into a few liquid tanks. So anything that's not super coolant, eh, uh, yeah, whatever. Damn it, there. All the non-super coolant goes up that direction, all the super coolant will get fed, or all the polluted water, or, ah, all the super coolant will get filtered back in, all the non-super coolant will get filtered out, and is that on a, yeah, it's literally on a power line. Please say it's on an automation line, though. Excellent, this should only take a few minutes, and once that's sorted, this over here can start feeding the, the super coolant on. In fact, let's have a quick check, see. You know what, turn it on. Yep, super coolant waits there to go on. And I think we're actually ready, seriously? All right, you go there and sever that line here. 
then you can get connected there. I don't think we have a line there, do we? And you can be set to filter out anything that is not super good. Ah, perfect. And go. Oh yeah, we just gotta wait for that last one to go in. Come on. Anyone? Damn it. Nope. Damn it, just... Oh wow, it's actually literally reversing. That is, um, interesting. Why is the polluted water not getting filtered out? What's go- oh, we haven't actually completed the liquid tanks on the piping. And there we go. Perfect. So, we'll filter out the polluted water, then we'll throw on the super coolant. Though I'm wondering if the super- oh, the super coolant makes it as far as there. I'm wondering if the tank will overflow. So you know what? We're gonna let drain the system. We're gonna drain the entire system, then fill it with super coolant. And hopefully nothing horrifying happens while we're doing it. Just about drain that polluted water tank. I think now's the time to hook this all back up again. You can connect in there. Don't overwrite anything, please. And... Excellent. By the time the super coolant gets over there, all the polluted water should be gone. Excellent. That should mean we'll fill up the loop. Then we're going to have to splice on some more, though. You see, I want to make sure that we've actually overfilled the tank as well. So let's get ready to manually pump on a whole bunch more extra super coolant, just in case. And done. All right, that gets that on. But we want to actually splice on a little bit more. We want to we want to over prepare just in case. So you give me some more liquid piping right there. We'll splice you on. And that should mean we overfill the loop just a bit. And we'll give it a few hundred kilos. We've got plenty of super coolant to spare. And that's an extra, well, almost two tons of super coolant chucked on there. That will keep this whole place nice and cool. Just saves us a little bit of power. But it just seemed like something convenient to do while we're here. We don't have, um, we have a lot of super coolant. More than we're probably ever going to need. Oh, and we brought back two ancient artifacts from that other planet. The water one, the one we demolished. That also has, when we clean them, given us neural vacillator recharges. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to get one for each. I was pretty sure there was like a, a percentage chance, like only 10% from getting from each one, but I'll, I'll take two. Uh, and then where is it? Down here, we can just go to this thing, we can hit recharge, and some of our duplicants, two of our duplicants already have deeper divers lung, or yeah, whatever it is you get from this thing. So I would prefer to get a few more of our astronauts to have this. It would save on oxygen and make them just that little bit more sustainable long term. So, Matthew Ebert, come on down. Grumpy Bear 80s already got Diver's Lung. In fact, they got Beefsteak as well, which means they've got extra strength. Boydra's already got Diver's Lung. They're our scientist. Matthew's actually already got Regenerative regenerative already, which is why we're chucking them in. They've already got one, which means it re reduces the chances of them getting... Well, there's only four things you can get out of this, and if one of them's already gone, that means it narrows it down to three. So they got a one in three chance of getting Diver's Lung. Assuming they show up at some point. Hey, there you go. Perfect. Nice helmet, by the way. And... Done. Complete the neural process. Deeper divers lot. Okay, that's actually pretty lucky. And next... Hmm, I think we'll go with Uzo. Uzo's uh, our build duplicate, and those build duplicates tend to be on the front line. A little bit of diver's lung, preferably, or, well, if they get one of the other ones, like the healing one, they tend to also get hurt the most. Uh, the, also, the one that incre decreases their stress levels, that's also very handy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uzo, come back here, buddy. You, uh, all right, get in. No, don't look worried. It's a good pain. What you got? Uh... Okay, that's... <laughs> Not gonna complain? Yep, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, I was kind of hoping they'd get some... Ah, never mind. That's... Yep, no, no complaints. That is... Uh, that is... Four now with deeper diver's lungs. Four of our eight astronauts have deeper diver's lung. That's actually too much. I've discovered something a little bit odd. I was doing prep work to launch for our next mission, so I, I grabbed a bunch of barbecue to stick into our rocket. We've now got... 17 million calories in here, and I was trying to figure out how much time we had left in the rocket. So I started looking under the water here, and as you can see, there's like 516 tons right there. When we click on the water, we can see, yeah, there's 500, 5,167 tons of water. That's a lot. So I added up all the tons of water, and then I grabbed our duplicates, figured out, we're actually consuming about 600 grams of oxygen per second, did some math with a freaking calculator, and... Yeah, we've got about 50,000 cycles worth of oxygen in water there. 50,000 cycles. 
That seems like a lot. I'm thinking that's that's not possible, right? So I double check my numbers. No, we definitely have that much water. There's just so much water. I'll, I'll attach the save. There's, the saves are always attached in every replay so, or every uh, video. So they're below. If you want to double check, you can double check my numbers. So 50,000 cycles, that felt way too much. So they thought, how long would it take to actually pump that much water in there? So you can only put in about 6,000 kilos of water per cycle. You can only get in like 10 kilos per second. There's 600 seconds in a cycle. So 6,000 kilos or six tons per cycle, which means it would take 3,393 cycles to fill this tank, which is impossible. This rocket's not that... We haven't even been playing the game that long, so there's no way we could actually pump in the amount of water that is in here. Someone was telling me there's a liquid duplication bug if you go with too much water in one tile. That has to have happened. It's the only way we've got this much water in here. Either that or my math is way off. Could be either. Who knows? Um, but yes, I think we're good on the oxygen front for this crowd for a very long time. But with 17 million calories, they'll only survive 2,136 cycles. So we've got 2,000 cycles worth of food, but 50,000 cycles worth of oxygen. Though I suppose worst comes to worst, we could always use the water to grow crops somewhere. So it's not like it's the end of the world, as long as they can find somewhere to grow crops. Oh, I don't have any seeds on board. Hmm. You know what? Doesn't matter. Time to launch. That, that was that was all we needed to do. Let's, uh, let's get everyone ready to go. We are heading over to the fire planet, Fireino. And we're here. So, Fireino planet. What have you got for us? Uh, let's oversee the planetoid. You're narrow. I keep forgetting how narrow you are. How much space we got up top? Ooh. Now, our rocket doesn't need that much space to land. What do we got here? Oh, we got plenty. That's like, what, 27 tiles? Yeah, we don't even need that much. I say we just land the rocket on top here, and then we're going to have to figure out from there how we're going to dig down and deal with all this magma. Hmm. Ooh, you know what? Let's just, let's just land the stuff and find out when we get down. And this time... We're much more careful, much more careful. We're going to launch, launch one of the duplicants at a time. Oh, and I better make sure that uh, schedule-wise, they're... I, I want to do it first thing in the morning. I want them to have the whole day before they need to nap. So first person down is going to... Yeah, is this weird thing happening here? Grumpy, Grumpy something 80? Yeah, Grumpy 80, you're going to be going down first. So Grumpy Bear 80 is going to be going down first. So you're just off your night shift. Yep, perfect. Time for you to head down, buddy. We're going to fire them down to right there. Try not to stand in the magma, if you wouldn't mind. And let's make sure they launch. As in, we're going to go in here and watch them go down. Grab an Atmo suit and leave. Perfect. Then we choose the second duplicate because, yes, two of them. Uzo, yep, it's time for you to go. Actually, what's your schedule like, Uzo? You should just be coming off. Actually, no, Uzo is currently sleeping. Yep. Yep, they're having a nice nap. What's your stamina? Actually, your stamina is a hundred percent. So you can go down right now. You're uh, you're perfectly good to go. So we'll stick Uzo right about there, and then we can go back down to the planet and start the necessaries. Yeah, you brought your suit as well. That's perfect. Hey, right, so Uzo, you can do that, and you start pushing the. Uh, we want to get rid of this magma. We don't want this magma anywhere near us, if at all possible. Back, just stick a couple of tiles right. Damn it. How are we already out of resources? Never mind, never mind. Rocketry. Let's go land our... The problem I see is we don't really have a good way to permeate through the magma very quickly. This is going to be awkward. But then again, it's always awkward on these fire planets. And every time the digger tries to build it, Uzo has much higher construction skill. Let them do their job. And yeah, dig out the land underneath them just to annoy them. Yep, yeah, he, he's really happy with you doing that. All right, let's... Uh, land here and immediately start putting down some ladder tiles. Uh, so, you know what? Doesn't really make a difference. All the way up. Let's go for it. Try and get it a little bit scorched as you go. You know, that, ooh, you know what? Let's just not stand under the nuclear-powered rocket while it's landing. Just just this one time. Out of the way. Out of, there you go. Yeah, that's fine. Now you can go back. Uh, now. A little bit scalding? That's fine. That's to be expected. Hopefully the regenerative pawn got it. Is it Grumpy Bear? No, actually your beefsteak and deeper divers long. Never mind. Eh, soon we'll have our duplicates back inside. We'll just change up the crew so that they are capable of getting back inside. Grumpy Bear, Uzo, yep, you're all allowed in. And let's check the interior. I want to make sure I haven't set this to uh, disallowed when they're on the ground. No, nope. no, nope, they're all good. Right, so we're fully ready to go. Let's decide how we're going to demolish this place. While there is several ways to go about this, I think what we're going to do is build... Well, sort of build a 
as... Uh, I can I explain this? I'm not sure what the term is in building, but it would be like, we want to build something like that. We want to force all the magma. So what we'll do initially is we'll build it like this. And then we'll build ladder segments down and force them out of the way. That would be the theory. How we do that without scolding our dupes, that's the question though. Used to be we were able to build doors this way. We could build mechanical airlocks down like this and so on. We could build through them and yeah, that's not going to be possible anymore. And I suppose we could use... Oh my god, actually, what's the radiation like on this map? Oh! We should probably put some radioactive cover around here. Otherwise, duplicates are going to get a bit toasty. Yeah, radioactive cover first, uh, then we'll worry about the magma. The magma could wait a second. We are having to double layer this because a single layer only reduces the rads to 150. A double layer gets us down to 60 and those steel doors are not really helping as much as we like. 112 rads. It's it's livable weight. Not great. Not perfect. Not bad. Not great. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That looks a little better. We should be able to stay out here for, yeah, as long as we want now. We basically have removed most of the radiation as a threat on this planet. Also, this planet doesn't get asteroids, so from what we can see here, no meteor showers forecasted. Places like here get three different types of meteor showers. Places like here also get meteor showers, but several of these outlying planets get nothing. I don't know why that is, but uh, that's just the way it is. Oh, and we're also going to dig up these places down here so that we, uh, if we accidentally drop stuff, it won't actually get fried. See, anything we drop down here is going to land on top of this obsidian, and that obsidian is 1500 degrees. And then anything we bring inside the shuttle would cook the place, so we can't be bringing anything back inside anytime soon. Oh, and we should probably set up some... Oh, yeah, we're going to need to start setting up power and rad bolts for, for refueling our engine. Actually, wait, wait, no, we can hold off on the rad bolts. We can definitely catch up on that. we got to figure out how we're going to burrow down here first. It might be easier to go down here, we can get deeper, or we should just start forcing the magma out so that it gives us more space. You know what? Let's try something a little different. Something we haven't tried before. We're going to try building with diagonal forcing. It should be theoretically possible, though it's been a while since I've tried this sort of thing. Can we build those tiles from this side without having to actually pass through? And yes, we can. Well, in that case, it makes things more interesting. Uh, you, uh, wall that up. We're going to want to try and force this magma out of here and over into this section. Come yeah, on. Once we can get this magma out of here, we can start in earnest. Actually, better plan. Pushing all of that stuff would be just too much effort. Instead, we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. We'll get some pitcher pumps over here and we'll dump the stuff into the vacuum of space to dispose of it. Far simpler. Uh, you can go right there. And you guys can be... Hey, give us magma. And make that enable auto bottle. And we'll copy that across. Perfect. And a couple more. And that should be the end of all of this magma. What the... Someone want to mop that up? Do you, do you want to stop standing in there? Thank you. Uh, perfect. Uh, we'll stick a few more in here. Done, and we should be able to get rid of this in no time at all. And that's about the last of it. Alright, what we want to do is build everything diagonally, uh, and then we start deconstructing stuff behind it to give us more space to build diagonally. Uh, you can go, you can go, oh, you can go. Perfect. This should kind of work. Oh, you can go as well, you can go as well. And we should probably put in some stairs for everyone to make it down here. It's just this whole thing is going to get rather sloppy rather fast uh, as I keep digging down, and I'd like to make sure we have some way of getting up and down that everything's suddenly falling apart. Perfect. Now this is going to push the magma in here and should hopefully force it out the other side or compress it. Hopefully it won't do too much compression and cause us problems. Before we start compressing this magma anymore, I want to make a little spout here for it to escape out of. So we're going to have to get a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit magma So we're going to have to build three ladder segments down here, hopefully without getting a duplicate too scalded. We've uh, built a, ah, a medical bed inside our rocket. Then we're going to have to dig this out down here. Uh, then that one as well. Hopefully no one gets too badly scalded. They can survive in the magma for a little bit of time. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Just quick in, 
Build it, get out. The digging is what's going to hurt a little bit. Grumpy Bear, get out of there, buddy. Tiny bit of scalding, that's fine. Boydra. Yeah, tiny bit of a scalding too. And then this. This should allow this magma to force its way out here and get destroyed by uh, the vacuum of space. Grumpy, run. There we go. A few tiny scaldings, but nothing serious. Now we can get back to ripping this out. I am acutely aware of how dumb this is. Yo, you can actually see it pushing the magma. But you know what? If it works, it works. Oh, pressure damage. Yeah, some of that magma, uh, the pressure's building up a bit. It's okay. We've got plenty of stuff to repair it with. And we can mop up the magma and dump it over there if needs be. But if we just keep forcing this fast enough, we should be able to double layer at some point, And then it'll be less of an issue. Uh, yeah, we just gotta keep the speed up. Keep the speed up, and that'll keep the pressure down. Uh, okay, not quite keep the pressure down, but it will mean we'll get there faster so we won't have to worry as much. Come on, keep pushing it, pushing it. Faster. Actually, we have a wee bit of a problem. We're not gonna be able to get all the way down to the bottom. We're actually just shy, despite having that... We're gonna have to pop something open here. I think if we pop this open, we can build... Actually, maybe here. would be better. There's 2,700 kilos, 2,006... Okay, there's 1,800 kilos of magma here. I say we dig down here and we start do building back across. That should give us the best chance. We can put that there. Uh, you know what? Let's put that there first. Then we can dig this sucker out. We'll have to deal with a little bit of magma leaking, but... Grumpy! What are you doing, buddy? Oh, wow. You both... Yep, that's one way to do it. It's fine. It's fine. Not even annoyed. That's just to be expected. Uh, to stop this stuff pushing through so much, let's just double wall it a bit to make sure that there's no more pushing through. If we double wall it, it stops the pressure from forcing it. Wow, there's 9,000 kilos of pressure there. Quickly, 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 come on. Uh, you see, the magma's a bit viscous. It's a little bit slow about pushing stuff about. Perfect. And then we just plop in that one. Actually, can we mop that up? No, too much liquid. Okay, we're going to push that up and then see if we can't mop it. And we can push in the rest of this. Perfect. Now that we've got it down this low, we can just squeeze this all across, push out all the magma, and then we gain access to all this niobium. Do we need to make this much of an effort? Nah, probably not. But it's more fun this way. The duplicates are building it so fast, we don't seem to be getting pressure damage. Just as long as we keep moving quick enough, we've almost got this. Come on, dupes. You oh. Actually, you know what? Let's do the last layer as well. Why not? Get it all the way to the end. Though we might have to take care of this area over here. Seems to be leaking a tad. Uh, yeah, let's just wall that in there and there. In fact, let's replace this whole section with a couple of layers of obsidian tiles. Just to make sure nothing breaks. We're just about done. This was... Pleasantly, mostly painless. And most of our duplicates didn't even get scalded. I think we had only two or three minor scaldings, and that was this area over here. And we managed to force out most of the magma. Okay, the pressure's here a little high, but we can fix that by double walling on this side. So we'll just make sure that this is double walled so that we don't have any breakages in the near future. And that should be almost done. Just get rid of that tile and that tile, and I think we're finished. We're going to crush a bunch of magma. Not really a loss. Not on this planet. Done. Done. Someone want to finish that last tile in there? Come on. You know you wanna. Done. Double walled. All with obsidian. And I am looking the, liking the look of that obsidian tile. Okay then. Now we can get down here and into this niobium which we came for. Plan? Very simple. Dig straight down. We're gonna go all the way down here and we're gonna core at this area. There is some niobium here, it's quite hot, so carrying it through the rocket's going to be a problem, but we are going to dump it off over here. Now, I think what we're going to do is maybe just deconstruct one of these automatic dispensers, build a storage bin in its place, and store all the niobium there. At least for this first transit. You can go right there, and we'll store all the junk there, and then steel can be moved to that section. Excellent! Okay then, let's go core ourselves out some niobium. While digging all of this out, they're grabbing all that niobium that's at a thousand degrees, and they're bringing it back to the rocket. Wait, no, wrong rocket. This rocket. And then we stick it into the storage bin, 
which is in a vacuum. It should be, right? Uh, let me check the gases over here. Yeah, it's definitely in a vacuum. But it is exchanging heat, it seems, with the ground beneath it, which is the refined carbon. So the refined carbon's temperature is going up. It's 209 degrees. It should be about 205. Uh, the reason for that is um, it's exchanging heat with this stuff, and that's exchanging heat with the inside of the reactor because of this thing, this insulated bridge. Or sorry, this bridge, liquid bridge, is allowing heat from the inside of here to get to the outside. But now this will dump heat into the refined carbon, and if it gets too hot, it'll suck heat out of here into the reactor? You know what? Doesn't matter. All I know is, for now, we've got this stuff in here, and it should be reduced in temperature to about 250 degrees-ish by the time we leave. Perfection! Uh, we just gotta wait until all of our diggers get through all of this. It might take a little time. There is a fair chunk to get through here. Ooh, then we gotta go through that volcano. Let's, let's expose a piece or two of this, because these things are the hardest volcanoes to deal with. They're just the amount of mass they give out, and how quickly it turns into solid tiles is kind of painful. Ah, here we go. What do we got? We got 284 kilos per second when it's erupting of niobium, and it erupts for 63 seconds. That is just a ridiculous amount of... Uh, no, you'll be him. All right, and we appear to have some stuff over here I'd like to get my hands on. This looks to be a strange brick, which is an entombed artifact. Let's go grab that as well once we're finished here. There may have been a few minor scaldings, so we're just going to let people sit inside the rocket for a bit and recuperate. It'll be fine. We should probably make a few more triage cuts just to speed this along a bit. There are three of them. You'll be up and running in no time. Only some minor scaldings. Now, the reason for all this stupidity is I thought we'd have a little bit of fun here. Let's see if we can't uh, dump this magma onto the ice biome and just cool it down. For no other reason than then we're here. I mean... I wonder how much of this magma we could dispose of by just dumping directly onto this. I don't think it's a lot somehow, but I, I want to see just how much we can manage. This should be fairly handy. We just don't want to risk our duplicates more than we already have. Let's just pour some magma in there. Run! Just start running, buddy. There we go. Okay, temperature-wise... No, no, not enough. Let's, uh... Let's make things a little bit more interesting. Let's take from down there. Someone just digs it out, runs away, that's all you gotta do. Beautiful. Now run. Run like your life depended on it. And much better. Alright, let's see just how much ice this will melt. Not exactly great, but they got some steam in here that's pretty hot. And I think we might be able to get some stuff done here. Uh, let's actually deconstruct this. And let's start digging in here and removing this junk. Let's see if we can't make ourselves a little bit of a steam turbine heat deletion device in here. So the plan is... Stupidly simple. We're going to pour all this magma down here, boil this, and uh, then we're going to feed it to steam turbines to cool it down. We don't need the power, we just want to sort of chill the planet out. And I think that might work. Getting this magma over there might be a bit trickier, but we can always use some magma pumps or, you know, pitcher pumps. There, there's ways. So uh, let's, let's try getting this thing online as quick as possible. We have our two steam turbines up and running. We've given them a layer of petroleum to sit in. Uh, we now have the cooling loop set up. We just got to put some water in there. So for the water, we're just going to pump some of this stuff over. We got some water right here. Uh, Power-wise, instead of running it all the way from the top of the map, quick coal generator. That should give us the quick power we need to get this done. All we need is basically a couple hundred kilos of water tops pumped into that. We could also have used petroleum, but water is just that much more efficient, and it's right here. All right, anyone want to... Get some coal into that. Seriously, how do we get... No, do we definitely have coal on the rocket somewhere. We've been digging up every planet we've come across. One of them had coal. Oh, here we are. Perfect. Coal is in. That starts pumping. Done. All right, once, the, uh, once that loop is filled, it's time to start letting that magma drop down. I think we can get this place cooking. First up, we're going to secure the strange brick that's in here. I think all the copper doors have melted due to the heat, and yeah, I'm not sure there's any way to rummage in those lockers. Actually, we will. We'll try rummaging in the lockers, but I'm pretty sure the moment we do, those things would incinerate, so 
let's maybe put some inside tiles beneath them. Hopefully that will work out. Oh, as for this over here, we changed this aqua tuner to niobium. That means it won't overheat until 625 degrees. So even if we dump in a bunch of boiling hot magma, it hopefully shouldn't cause any problems if you have enough dilutant for it. But we'll find out. I think we'll put in this stuff first and then we'll put in this last. Uh, anyone want to get in there real quick? We would like to get that out as soon as possible. Ah, there we go. A little bit of magma to help speed things along. This was just taking time. There's some sour gas in here and it's making it very uncomfortable for our duplicates. I think a little bit of steam to spread out. Uh, okay, that's. I think that's enough of that for now. We'll just cancel that. We'll let the... Uh, maybe get everyone back in the rocket. Guys, I love the way you're just deciding to take narcoleptic naps now. Like it's the best time of the day. It's just, oh yeah, 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 no, now we'll do it. Uh, get out of there. And steam turbine has already kicked in. Oh, and does that provide power? It should actually cause the uh, the aqua tuner to kick in, and the aqua tuner can cool down the steam turbines. Hmm. What what are you even doing? You know what? Fine. Put in that last tile, but then get out of here. We want to let the the steam work its magic for a bit before we go any further. That steam has worked wonderful magic. It's only like a hundred and thirty C or so, and like two hundred tops. I think our duplicates can wander around their atmosphere suits inside that and not get scalded anymore. That was pretty quick. Uh, the steam is, of course, going to exchange heat with a bunch of this stuff, so maybe time to dig this out now? Yeah, let's dig this out as best we can. No point lo lollygagging about. We've got plenty of stuff that needs uh, steam removal. Oh, and we've sealed this in at the top so none of the steam can escape. This should be a sealed system. I think it's almost time to leave here. We've got all the niobium. Uh, let's just open this up. Then maybe open this up, depending on just how well the steam handles. The problem is the, the temperature differential is pretty high up there. It's about a thousand degrees, so our duplicates can't hang around there for very long without getting scalded. And... Yeah, just, just run away now. No. Oh. Yeah. Sounds about right. You're getting scalded, and you can literally nap through it. I'm, I'm absolutely impressed. That is incredible. Anyway, that's uh, how do you even make a tile there? There's a temp shift plate out of obsidian. Uh, never mind. Anyway, that all falls down here. This ice is actually really cold. It's minus a hundred degrees in several places. In fact, several times, a couple of times, almost twi two minus two hundred degrees in some places. So, this stuff's freaking cold. It's why it's not well. That's why this whole place isn't a complete incinerator. I've put in a few temperature shift plates to try and spread the temperature around. However, that's not helping as much as we'd like. This thing is now running at a consistent clip, but that's only because we stuck in a massive row of temperature shift plates all the way across. Uh, we'll just dig this bit out, and then once that's done, I think it's time we let... Well, actually, no, we can't leave. We still have to tame the Niobium volcano. Actually, before I uh, let this in and turn this whole place into a hellscape, well, preferably a hellscape, I want to make sure that the power can get in here and you, we can seal, seal, still seal ourselves out. You see, this power wire thing is causing a problem because we can't really wall this off properly, so instead I'm going to run the power through here. But first, I want to get rid of all that carbon dioxide. There was some carbon dioxide gas that got in here, namely because we were messing around with the uh, ice biome and there was some frozen carbon dioxide. It got in here, but it's slowly dissipating, but not fast enough. So we're going to stick in some gas pumps. We're going to whisk out all that carbon dioxide so there's a vacuum in here. Then we can put in the heavy watt joint plate here, run the power up to it, and and then seal this area off so that there's no way in and out for the steam to affect this area. That way we can just let this thing do its thing. If it all gets incinerated and we can never go into it again, it's fine. It's sealed off. We're, fa we're safe from it. However, if we want to go back in again, we should be able to deconstruct some bricks and get in. Uh, first... We just got to get rid of some gas. Power section sealed. Uh, I forgot about this little batch of magma. Once that's gone, yeah, we drained this. So just a quick dump there. Then we're going to see just how much of a mess we can make. Uh, inside here, Grumpy Bear is getting a little bit of TLC. There, there has been a few scaldings. It, it's been a... Oh, there's another one. Run, 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 run. You'll be fine. We'll, we'll get you some TLC in a little bit once this has finished raining and we've dug that out. I mean, there's no rush here. You can get your TLC in a minute. The plan? Quite simple. We dig out this one tile. Uh, yeah, that's there. 
That should allow a lot of magma to pour down here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to seal it in. Seal in this area so that none of this steam can escape out, just in case things get too boily. Run! And once you're out of there... Come on, come on, come on, come on. Perfect. We're going to emergency that sucker. Who's on the way? Go, 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 go. Ooh. Making a nice little mess over there. That is... Perfect! And we're good. Let's just see how long it takes the magma to drain out. And I think we've got enough done for the day. That is, um, not as hot as I was expecting. That's only about three or four hundred degrees. Huh. Pity. Well, not so much that it's pity. Okay, it's five hundred degrees up here, but we should be able to break in here in, I don't know, about twenty or thirty cycles and core out the rest of this. Not that we need to, but we want to. I mean, if we're going to core out all the planets, we might as well core them out correctly. All right, next up, we got to take care of this Niobium volcano. It's got to go. It, it's got to be tamed. There's a few beautiful designs I've seen going around on this, and I want to try them. They just look incredibly, stupidly simple. And if it is, and it works, I am more than happy to give them a go. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.